Good evening. Could I show you a little bit of bug life from Karate's uh, Kanker Dai or Kushanku? The reason for this video is from a conversation on Facebook by the Joint Box. This particular bit of bug life, I can't take the credit for. This is the work of uh, Sensei Ian Abernethy. So I'm just going to replicate here, not for the whole sequence of the entire drill, just for this one particular arm. What I want to do is give you a bit of an overview as to our approach to joint locks, rather than just this one joint lock. First and foremost, why do we do joint locks? Well, in the country of Peru, we consider the purpose for absolutely everything that we do. Every technique or drill has a purpose within the syllabus or within the class. And if that purpose is to demonstrate to sensei that you have an understanding of biomechanics in order to justify promotion in grade, that's absolutely fine. And I mean, a good way to illustrate that would be the first uh, bomb block, if I put his uh, tone again. I can show Sensei about how this is a poor arm lock. If I move the forces away from the fulcrum, I have a better arm lock. And indeed, if I change the muscles, I get an even better lock. Uh, another reason might be pain compliance, or if I make good old Guru Koti in the goose neck, I like to walk Tony out. And Tony is starting to learn that he was his development. Um, another reason for a joint lock, if I take the good old reverse wrist, kind of goose neck version of the knee scopes, might be that I want to secure the strength. So I've got here my hand coming techniques, off the back of a wrist lock. So another reason might be um, submission grappling, you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, combat Jiu Jitsu, whatever else. Would you like to back weight for them there, Tony? So, for example, you're not taking your army. Okay, or whatever your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu equivalent is. Okay? So that might be another reason that you want to do it. Finally, uh, joint locks taking it from a pragmatic perspective. When we cover the pragmatic side of the locks, everything's going to come back to one of two objectives. The one objective is to facilitate escape. And that's what our duty forms are based on, is facilitating escape. The other thing we're going to learn is how to debilitate. And that's why we spend a lot of time learning to strike and to debilitate and knock out. And that's where joint locks will fit in in terms of debilitation. Joint destruction. Okay? And that's what this arm lock is made known. Um, I'll make no attempt to hide this particular arm lock from the time. It's just not to nastiness, it's, it's arm destruction. Okay? So the sequence we're going to look at from uh, Kushanku or Kanku Dai is from right near the end of the pattern, what you get is a spear, turn, some other hand movements, then you get the end pick, which you switch back. The version I learned has got a short cat stand to the high block and a low block. And what you then do is step through to keep it actually with a double X block. And the double X block is not a straight down the movement, crucially it's a circle followed by a very violent stand-up on high X block in a straight line. And this is what I want to illustrate. It's a great joint block for me. So how I'm going to start this is with um, taking this double block as almost a Ponsio kind of Kushigaruma. So I'm going to I'm going to roll all the way through to here. This arm comes down. Now this is the crucial thing I want to illustrate for my friends on Facebook. What I never want from a standing joint lock is to be here. The reason being if Tony takes hold of me and decides to roll, when you get hit, I do make a version of back of Tony roll. What you must do is use a kick dash using your stance. Now, from here, I've got an arm lock. Now what I'm going to do is let Tony extricate his arm because he needs this for work tomorrow. And here I'm going to follow the cutter. Okay, it's a very, very violent upward movement. With Tony's own body weight holding him there, as I stand up, the arm's just not even going to go that far, it's just not physically possible. So the cat is telling me to have a very violent movement. But what we can learn from this is to make the controlled joint box, is to use our other stats here. And there are other versions that we can use. I can start to uh, put in rotational locks, all sorts of clever things. But the point is, really, So, to conclude that, what I've tried to give there is an overview as to reasons behind joint lock, our perspective on joint locks, 
And also a little bit of a uh, practical play in the hope that that's some interest to you. My thanks to my Uki for this evening. Yeah.